Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian American experience. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. This month, we bring you two celebratory events that took place within the past four weeks. First, we go to the National Italian American Foundation's New York Annual Gala, held at Cipriani's 42nd Street. We'll then go to the St. Regis Hotel, where the National Organization of Italian American Women held their annual luncheon. Roma Torre of NY1 was the MC. In its seventh year, organized by NIAF board member Gerard La Rocca and hosted by Joe Piscopo, NIAF honored three people this year. Retired Judge Frank M. Ciufani, Lorenzo Zurino, the CEO of The One Company, and Mary Lou Delfino Burke, Senior Managing Director and Head of Commercial Real Estate for LaFrac. This year's entertainment was provided by 10-year-old Romina Perry. Now let's join NIAF at Cipriani's 42nd Street. With my involvement with NIAF, um, it has enabled me to introduce my, share with my kids my Italian heritage in a way that I would have never been able to do. One of our signature events is we send 20 students to Italy who otherwise might not have the opportunity to go. And uh, we'll be sending 20 students to uh, Malise in June of this year. In NIAF, we think about three things, preserving the heritage and culture. That's very important. Secondly, let the world know about all the great things Italians and Italian Americans have done. And then finally, we just got to make those bonds closer with Italy. And we're excited about Molise. My dad was born in Molise. Oh, there you go. So, okay. so it's like coming home. Well, it's always great to be in New York City, my hometown. Indeed it is. And, it's, and here we are seven years later yep. with another uh, New York gala. Exactly. Another successful gala even more important than ever yeah. because we get to celebrate our culture which as you know is a very inclusive culture and at a time when people come together over being neighbors and food and music and the things that are really of value. Oh, you've had a long career. You have a long career in the movies. Yeah, well, you're, you're now in theater, in theater and you're still doing His Honor. That's right. That's right. We're doing it now. You know, as, as I, I think uh, we're in an Italian event, so we're always giving back. Yeah. That's what it's all about. I mean, this beautiful place that we are, we, we try to do everything we possibly can, but Neop, try to get the young people to come back to their roots yeah. and so on. We, we go to Italy all the time. We're going again this year, we've been last year, we've gone every year, and uh, nothing more beautiful. It's wonderful to be recognized by NIAF, and it's wonderful because you deserve it because of all the work you've done. Thank you. It's truly an honor to just try to support such a magnificent foundation. It's also my, my great honor to work for LaFrac for over 10 years now. Um, I head their commercial real estate. And most of what you see when you're on the Long Island Expressway is what they started approximately 50, 60 years ago. Uh, and it's a magnificent legacy. And that's, that's the first of a, a few communities uh, that they built. I started 11 years ago here in the United States, but my family do this from 104 years. So I'm the fourth generation. And as I said any time, I grow up in a warehouse between extra virgin olive oil, tomatoes and pasta. Uh, and, and so the family business started in the south, in Sorrento? Correct, started in the Amalfi Coast 100 years ago. And uh, since my grand-grandfather has the big boat that from Naples bring the food into, uh, into a Peninsula Sorrentina and the Amalfi Coast. I moved from Sorrento to Milan, first of all because it's, you know, the logistics between Milan and New right. York is much better. And uh, as the, a lot of people know, you know, Sorrento is amazing, the Amalfi Coast, oh my God, unbelievable. But to arrive there, you know, <laughs> you need to pray any time that you need at least three hours from the Naples airport right. to Sorrento. So for me, you know, it would be very difficult and it was very difficult. That's why I moved to Milan with my office in Italy and you know I simplify my, my life honestly. Where does Ciufani hail from in Italy? Oh it's from <laughs> Valencia in northern Italy. Okay. Massimo, my paternal grandfather. He was a terracotta mold maker ah. who came to this country 
in 1900, went through Ellis Island, ended up in Perth Amboy, New Jersey, the largest manufacturer of terracotta in the country at that time, and that's where he worked. He met my grandmother, who grew up in Naples. They had six children, my father the youngest. How's everybody doing tonight? What a crowd, what a beautiful night. I stand before you so very proud of our heritage, and no matter what heritage you are here this evening, the ethnicity of America is the strength of America. So God bless you for being a part of this great night tonight. I just want to express uh, with the Deputy Consul General Silvia Limoncini from the bottom of our heart, the support and the gratitude towards NIAF and especially toward the New York chapter of NIAF. We are such a fantastic and big family. We express the support for what you do every day and every night here from New York to strengthen the ties between Italy and New York City. I'm sure that we'll have a brighter future uh, with you together, and please count on us as we count on you. Grazie, viva la NIAF, viva l'Italia, viva New York. We want to make sure the honorees receive the respect they deserve tonight, so we are so proud to recognize these individuals, and every single one of them has worked so hard to make this uh, gala a success. We couldn't be happier to share their incredible stories tonight. Please welcome to the stage Mary Lou Delfino Burke. Wow, thank you. Not a moment can pass without me thanking my family, of course. My totally supporting husband, Alan. We're together 44 years. <laughs> my treasured sister, Casey. There are no words to describe her greatness and her support in every way and every day of my life. My special niece, Marie, who came up from Florida. And most especially, my adoring niece, Morgan, who brings joy to my life every single day. When I think of Morgan, I think of the future. It's all about the future, and that's really why we're here tonight. As we know, when our ancestors came here, it was all about the future and making a better life for their family. They sacrificed everything. I know our grandmother never saw her siblings again when she came to America, and that was always a source of pain her entire life. Never, never, never give up. I truly love you, and thank you very much for this honor. Please welcome retired Judge Frank Chufani, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd be so kind. My father, may he rest in peace, was a hardworking man. How he did it, I do not know. Shift work, Chevron in Perth Amboy, where he grew up, alternating days off, 7 to 3, 3 to 11, 11 to 7, throughout his entire working life. A hardworking man, lived and worked for one company his entire life. He met and fell in love with my mother. And she looked like Sophia Loren. And as soon as he saw her, he said, I'm gonna marry her. And he married her and was devoted to her for years. So when I got to the point where I was going off for the first time in that family to get a college education, she went back to work for the city of Perth Amboy and worked as a secretary to help me get my education at the University of Notre Dame. In 2003, I was lucky enough and most honored enough to have the best 14 years of my life as a, a, in my career. And that's being uh, nominated to the Superior Court of New Jersey. And what a great job that is. Can you think of a better job every day than to come to work every day and to administer justice? I was lucky enough to serve the people of the state of New Jersey for 14 years in that respect. And I think that my Italian heritage served me so well. 
Because when we think about all the things that are wonderful about being Italian, I think empathy, empathy is, is something that we all have as Italians. Please welcome Lorenzo Zarino! A special thanks to my lovely parents for traveling here all the way from Italy into United States for the first time. Thanks, Mama. Thanks, Papa. And the most important thank you to America, a country I came to first when I was 23rd. I had a few pennies in my pockets, but an enormous luggage of dreams. My story is not an exceptional story, but the memories are the exceptional. My biggest inspiration is the little person of my life, my darling daughter Adele. She's, she's the engine that drives me and compels me to do my best every day. I thank Nias, Niaf, and all for your friendship, for your passion, and for your guidance, quality that are shared by the Italians and the American alike. I want to leave you tonight with the four words that make the sense of my life. Family, as you probably heard tonight that I mentioned a few times. Friendship, loyalty, and happiness. These four words is the words I found here in the United States. And that's why I, I feel to say with all my heart, God bless America, viva l'Italia. Thank you. Mamma, son tanto felice perché ritorno da te la mia canzone ti dice Che il più bel giorno per me Mamma, son tanto felice È un più bel giorno perché Mamma, solo per te la mia canzone I think this tonight was so spectacular Determination Empathy, love of country, these three honorees. I, I am just so impressed and inspired by each one of them. We look forward to celebrating with you again next year here at Cipriani's. Thank you so much for being here. The two honorees at the Noi Annual Luncheon were Sandra L. Di Paolo, Global Head of Anti-Money Laundering for BNY Mellon, and Dr. Judith A. Salerno, President of the New York Academy of Medicine. And the Friend of Noyo Award went to the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute, of which we were all honored and humbled. Now let's join Noyo at the St. Regis Hotel. to be honored by such a wonderful organization that does so much for Italian-American women. I've been um, part of this luncheon for many years and have always been admiring how much they do for the Italian young women in this community. It really does mean so much. I'm very humbled by this. It's uh, not something that I ever expected and really something that means a lot to me. My Italian upbringing is really part of who I am and uh, again to be able to share that with other people is really a blessing. And I work for the Bank of New York Mellon as the global head of anti-money laundering and I have the benefit every day of trying to help law enforcement identify potentially suspicious transactions that are running through the banking system, whether it be to assist those involved in uh, prohibiting terrorist financing or uh, those who are moving drug proceeds through our, our banks. So really is a great job to help law enforcement every day.
How great is it to be honored by your own people? <laughs> oh, it is spectacular. And um, I just wish some of my relatives were here who have passed were here to see this because they made this all possible. They made the trip from Italy many, many years ago and made it possible for me to have the life I have here in this country. So special. I think a lot of us had that experience where we grew up with these working class um, grandparents, sometimes parents, who then we go on to college and we go into a totally different world. And sometimes when you go back home, it's sort of like going between, going between two different worlds. Yes, and I'm trying to give my children an appreciation of what that was like. They're always making fun of me because they're saying, um, well, you know, you're, uh, you, you have to make grandmas this or grandmas that. And I said, yes, because that's part of who you are. Yeah. And it's just, a, it's just wonderful to be able to pass on some of those traditions, but they haven't lived it in the same way yeah. that I did. 2019 marks 40 years of the Institute. Some of you have been here longer than others. What's it been like? Many changes. <laughs> It's been great, uh, but I would have to say the last 12 years have been the best. <laughs> the Institute is going to continue to grow and um, we'll be there for um, 50 years more. <laughs> You've been here nine years. nine years. Less than a decade. Yes, that's true, but it's the best professional nine years of my life, no joke. <laughs> I'll be here three years in June and I'm excited to see what the future holds. I'm thrilled today because since the incoming chancellor and the current chancellor are busy, I get to be the third on the list and introduce the award, so I'm so happy. You, Matilda, in fact, are one of the founding members of this organization, among so many other things, including first former first lady of the state of New York, author of a couple of books, and I understand you have a new book out. This is just for the children. Every child got this book now, and the rest who didn't get it are getting it this term now. And what it has is all the information for the child to know what they should eat, should not eat, and how to take care of themselves. It'll be their own little treasure. You also have authored a book about health. Yes. The book is called The World Without Cancer, and it uh, was a, an effort that came out of quite a bit of research on all the ways in which we can prevent cancer, prevent diabetes and heart disease through the ways we act every day. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to now another subject that the both of you were involved in and still are involved in, and that is the promotion of Italian language for in general, and then the advanced placement that you were both at the ground level of getting the advanced placement up and running. Well, that's still going on, and it's very important. And I think more and more, I think the children are learning from their parents in the family. That's where it starts, about their traditions, their language, uh, going to Italy, and making the, opening their minds to who they are. Their, the heritage is very important, and it makes them feel good. That It's like having a medal or something like that, but you don't see the medal, it's in their heart. I am the co-founder of the Italian Language Foundation with Mr. Louis Tallarini. It's, uh, it was founded in 2008, and it's true that as Italians and Italian-Americans, we certainly want to preserve and cherish our language. But for all of those who are not Italian, and more, more students in our country now are not Italian than are, are Italian, so you'll find, especially in New York, in the metropolitan area, the vast majority of students studying Italian are either of Latino background, African-American background, and we love that. We, we want to see other people at, uh, uh, embrace the Italian culture and language, and that's what's happening right here in our own country. It's very exciting. It is my pleasure now to congratulate our 2019 honorees on this very special occasion, and uh, I want to introduce them by name. Sandra L. DiPaolo, the global head of anti-money laundering, BNY Mellon. Dr. Judith A. Salerno, president of the New York Academy of Medicine. We are also uh, very delighted to be presenting the Friend of Noya Award. It goes to the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute. As we all know, it uh, provides generous uh, support uh, with resources, enabling Noya to accomplish its wonderful mission. There are many of you here who join us every year. And to those of you who are here for the first time, 
Please know that your presence and generosity enable us to accomplish our mission, to unite and connect women through, to Italian culture and heritage, and to empower and advance the educational and professional aspirations of current and future generations. We thank you all for being here. When this morning we saw the sun in the New York streets, we said it must be the Noyav day, because you are always, you come with the springtime with beautiful sunny days. It's a true pleasure for a Consul General to say publicly and loud what I think, to say grazie, to express my gratitude uh, on behalf of the Italian institution for what you do. Uh, every year, every day of the year, of course, you're the pillar of your family, you're the pillars in your jobs, because the outstanding professional achievement you have all reached uh, are really a reason of big pride for, for Italy, for Italian institutions, but also, I think, the big reason behind this unique friendship between Italy and the United States. And I also want to praise uh, uh, very much the role you have in connecting with the new arrived, with the new layers of uh, Italian migrations. Uh, I see here also many familiar faces of uh, Italians who have come here in these last years. And I think uh, you know how much uh, the Consulate General supports you as a bridge between uh, generation, between different layers of uh, Italians, Italian Americans here in New York City in the tri state area. The, the key word is really insieme and I think you are the best expression of what, uh, of the strength of the Italian community when we do uh, things insieme. As a third generation Italian American woman, I consider myself a modern day woman grown up with Italian American values. My grandparents came from Harlem and they raised eight children. They struggled to feed them every day. My father got up early in the morning and delivered newspapers with his father, my grandfather, before he actually went to school and before my grandfather went to go work at the Fulton Fish Market, his other job, and that was long before it became a tourist attraction. One of the benefits was that they gave him the leftover fish to take home to his family and to his friends, so the neighbors always came to his house for dinner, and needless to say, he grew up thinking that they were very rich. My grandmother was as tough as they came. She always made sure that her children were well provided for and happy despite all the challenges that they faced. My parents were high school sweethearts. They married at the age of 20, and this June they will be celebrating their 56th anniversary. And together they managed to do it all. My dad became a leading technology officer at Solomon Brothers under Michael Bloomberg. He put himself through college at night while my mom stayed home to raise the two children. And they raised us with such a strong work ethic. My brother and I started delivering newspapers on our bicycles long before we hit our teenage years. The good news is we didn't have to go work at the fish market. We learned that through hard work, commitment, and our family support, that we could achieve anything that we set our minds to. I put myself through law school at night while working full time on the trading desk, as, de as Betty mentioned. And then in my last year of law school, I met my wonderful husband, Dominic, who, as a blind law student, reinforced all of the messages that my family had instilled in me, that with hard work, love, and dedication, there are no limits to what you can achieve. I had so many strong women in my life around me as role models that it seemed normal for me as a young female lawyer in the early 90s to believe that anything was possible and that I could be successful both personally and professionally. So when young professionals approached me as a mentor, I seized the opportunity to share with them what I learned from my Italian American upbringing. Thanks again for this great honor. In honoring me, you are really honoring several amazing Italian women who are no longer with us, but who have inspired me throughout my life and played a significant role in shaping my personal history. The first is my mother. She was a child of Italian immigrants. Her father died when she was 12, leaving her as the oldest of four daughters to help her mother find a way to support the family. She lied about her age so she could get work to help support them. She was never educated beyond technical school, but when she and my father married, 
they vowed that all of their children would have the chance to receive the benefits of higher education. Each day, they worked toward that goal. They believed passionately that a better education would lead to a better life. And then there were my grandmothers, both of whom lived with us as I was growing up in Newark, New Jersey. Several years ago, I visited the hilltop village in Sicily's Enna province where my grandmother, Francesca, was born. And her namesake, Brooke Francesca, is here with us today. Today, it's still a remote, tiny village. I imagined what it must have been like for her in, her early, in the early 1900s to leave her home at age 15, knowing that, in all likelihood, she would never see her parents again. She made her way to Palermo, where she boarded the ship that would take her across the ocean, with only the hope that it would lead to a better life for her, her future grandchildren, her children, don't cry, Marlene, <laughs> and her grandchildren, and my other grandmother, Maria Libra, who made the crossing from Naples, steerage class, pregnant with twin boys, one of whom was my father. I am so grateful to them for their courage and their determination, which led to opening so many doors for me and my siblings. Thank you. With the arrival of Dean Tambori 2006, the Institute has grown to encompass a much more varied and expanding set of goals, not to mention diversity and inclusion. In everything the Institute does, the aim is to further explore and promulgate the experience of the Italian diaspora. It gives me great pleasure to present this award to my colleagues and very much friends from the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute. I like to think, not because I'm the dean, but because of what the work that they do, and I believe that I can say this with all honesty, that we are probably the premier institute for the, Italian, the study of the Italian diaspora in the world. We think it's extremely important to have a dialogue with Italy, and we have that dialogue. We've been extremely fortunate to have three uh, successive consul generals who have opened the doors of the uh, Italian consulate uh, to us, and also we've been fortunate with the directors and the current director, especially, of the Italian Cultural Institute. That dialogue is so important for us to have, whether we have it in English or whether we have it in Italian. For me, as someone who is, by training a professor of Italian and by experience also uh, uh, a scholar of Italian American studies and Italian diaspora studies, that dialogue just remains so important. It remains important for us to understand the Italy of the past through our own historical immigration experience, and it's important for us to understand the Italy of the present with regard to what Italy is going through now with their own immigration issues. So um, we like to think that by studying our history that we can help contribute to a current dialogue that's going on now in Italy, and it seems to work. With great humility, thanks to the National Organization of Italian American Women, and with great gratitude, thanks to my colleagues, staff, if you want to call them that, to my colleagues at the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute for what they have done and for what they continue to do to make us the success that we are. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode of Italics. I'm Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. <laughs>